and people think of La ilaha illallah, of course, as a testimony of, of faith. Um, but if we look at La ilaha illallah used as a, as a dua, and of course there are two types of dua. There is a, a dua uh, al-mas'ala, where you're actually asking Allah for something, where you're okay. saying, oh Allah, help me, oh Allah, give protect me, me oh Allah, give me this. And uh, dua al-ibadah, where you are simply making dua right, right. For the, without asking Allah for a specific thing, right. but for the purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you for making that point. Thank you. And, and I think that, you know, la ilaha illallah, maybe people, because it doesn't contain asking Allah specifically for something. Right. But there's no doubt that the power of mentioning la ilaha illallah as a means of coming near to Allah and a means of getting relief, we said a, a key principle that I want all the, the viewers to remember, that the number one reason for your sadness to be lifted and for you to get relief from your troubles and a way out of your difficulties is your tawheed, is your worship of Allah alone. There is not one thing that brings you relief more than that. And the, from the best of statements, if not the best of statements to affirm your tawheed is right. of course, la ilaha, la ilaha yeah. illallah. And so saying this does bring you a huge amount of relief from a number of angles. And I think one of the angles is of course, if you look at uh, the dua of Yunus, La ilaha illa anta subhanak. You know, there is, you know, inni kuntu min al dalimin. That la ilaha illallah is a big part of that. Yes. Yeah, and that is the, the dua, the, yeah. the sort of the dua that is there to relieve hardship. distress and hardship. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said, wa kadhalika nunjil mu'minin. In this way, we bring or we will save the believers in right. the same way that we saved 